Hello and welcome to another edition of £100 Photography. In this edition I'm going to briefly explain the different types of cameras that are available on the market and also the difference between sensor sizes on the interchangeable lenses. Unfortunately I can't tell you what is going to be the best camera for you because that is going to be a personal choice down to yourselves and your particular needs and wants out of the cameras. However, I would like to be able to give you as much information as possible for you to be able to decide that for yourselves. So I'm going to start right at the big, the smallest ones for you. Here we have a tra traditional looking point and shoot camera. Uh, the main advantage of these ones are the fact they're very small, light, you can easily stick them into your pocket. And it's got everything on there that you need to be able to shoot with. So you've got your screen on the back to be able to see what you're shooting and your lens is in there to be able to short, shoot short and long range. And that's really it. This one comes with the benefit of the fact that you can change the settings on the top to be able to shoot, change all the settings yourself or if you want the camera to take control of some of them for you. I must admit personally I'm not keen on these sorts of cameras because I like to have the viewfinder on the back rather than looking through the screen. But if you're the opposite of me, then this is going to be quite a good choice for you. These also have a very small sensor size, so obviously as you can see that's a very small gap in there. So only part of that will be the, the sensor inside there, which will affect uh, quality at distance work. Moving up from that, you've got the Micro Four Thirds system. This one is a Panasonic Lumix. Uh, let's just take the lens off so you can see the sensor in there. So, yeah, so you see that in there. Just in the middle, that's your lens, that's your sensor in there. It is roughly half the size of a full frame camera, but for argument's sake, they they say it's it's half the size. Uh, the main advantage with that size sensor is that you can, to get the equivalent focal length in the full frame, you have to times the focal length on the lens by two to get the equivalent. So even though this one on here says 14 to 45, that would be the equivalent on a full frame camera of 28 to 90 mil, which would be a very useful uh, small telephoto lens for pretty much most of the sort of work you want to do. Because of that, this actually makes it quite good for long distance work because you don't need to have such a big heavy lens on it. Uh, there you can get the 70 to 150 mils so on this this would be equivalent to the full frame of a what did I say 70 to 150 so it would be a 140 300 so if you like doing nature and wildlife photography so you know subjects where you can't get too close to that can actually make it quite a, a good option for you Moving up from that, we then have the APS-C sensors, otherwise known generally as crop sensors. Again, these are smaller than full frame lens uh, sensors. Uh, depending on which manufacturer you go for, uh, this one here I've got as a Canon. So this one would be upon the magnification to get it to the same size. As full frame is 1.6, but generally speaking, most uh, crop sensor cameras are a magnification rate of 1.5 uh, Canon's sensor being ever so slightly smaller than the other ones hence that for you. Moving up from that you then have the full frame cameras and what they mean by full frame is the size of the sensor on those cameras is the same size as the negatives that you used to get on the old uh, film in era cameras. And then the next one above that is medium format, but that is probably beyond the scope of what most people want or be able to use. That is really down up into the sort of serious uh, photographer style, might, probably mostly studio photography. Um, now there are different types of cameras out there as well. Uh, one, another one I haven't mentioned is what's, or sometimes known as bridge cameras or compact cameras. Now those ones are kind, the easiest way of describing it is a point and shoot sensor and internals 
made to look like a DSLR. So basically that into that. There are advantages to those if you don't want to be bothered by changing lenses, but want something a bit bigger than the point and shoots, then that will satisfy you. Again, there are drawbacks to those is the fact that because of the, the small sensor, they really don't do well in low light and they can be subject to quite a bit of noise, especially when you really zoom in and then decide to crop the picture later on. I think for most people, a good option will actually be something like uh, uh, this not necessarily micro four thirds because they do now do them in uh, full frame and um, crop sensor sizes is mirrorless cameras. Now these are basically the whole the point about mirrorless cameras is that they do away with a mirror. So on SLRs, single lens, lens reflex, there's a mirror that goes up and reflects it. it the image into the viewfinder. Now basically mirrorless ones do away with that and do it all digitally. There are pros and cons to that. Uh, the major con for those is, is cost is a, is a big one. Uh, being newer technology and especially if you get them in the full frame and crop sensor sizes they can be quite expensive. Uh, that one there is a, is a micro four thirds one uh, that's been around since 2010 so you can pick that up very cheap and I will be doing a review of that at some point soon. Um, and then you've got, uh, now this is a bit of an odd one here, this is a four thirds camera, not a micro four thirds, but it's a DSLR, so a digital single lens reflex. So basically the digital side of it is how it records the images but it's still got the mirror that comes up when you take the picture and exposes the image to the sensor. I hope that makes sense and I hope it's a little bit enlightening for you to make, help you make a better choice. Uh, coming up soon on future episodes, like I said, I will be giving a review of this, the Panasonic G1. Um, so I've actually got quite a few I need to review. Now I've obviously now I've also got this Olympus uh, E410. As I said, this is a digital SLR, not a mirrorless camera. Olympus, very shortly after this one came out, went over to just doing the micro four thirds mirrorless cameras. So that will be an interesting one to do a review of. And I've also got the Canon EOS 400D. So that I'll have a review of coming up soon as well. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed that and it's been in insightful for you. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.